in order to help you a bit, Shakespeare is always a little difficult to follow. Um, I'd like to introduce a few characters. It might, it might provide a little clarity. Prospero is the just and fair Duke of Milan. Yeah. He spends his time studying mathematics, philosophy, astronomy, astrology, and magic. Prospero leaves the business of running Milan to his scheming and evil brother, Antonio. <laughs> Antonio offers a bribe to Alonzo, the king of Naples. In order to remove Prospero's title of Duke. The king gives Prospero's dukedom to Antonio. <laughs> Antonio sets Prospero and his young daughter Miranda afloat on a dilapidated boat where they are shipwrecked on a deserted island somewhere in the Mediterranean. Not a good brother. <laughs> Prospero plans for years how he might exact revenge upon those who did him wrong. Our play begins 12 years later, a more development. Against my very heart, poor soul. 
practice prevents the like crying, so. You're not remembering how I cried out then. It's a hint that brings my eyes to it. You're a little further, and I'll bring you to the present business, which is now upon us, without the which this story are most important. Wherefore do they not that our destroys? But the magic one, she might tell her oaks that question. Here they are not so dear the love my people bore, nor set a mark so mm -hmm. bloody on the business. Much with colors fairer paint their proud lands. And few they hurried us aboard a bark. For us some leagues to see where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat. Not rigged, nor tackled. Sail nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. There lay voices in the cry of the sea, whose pity sighing back again did us but loving crawl. What was I then speaking to? Cherub, thou wast, I did preserve thee. Thou didst smile and infuse it with a fortitude from heaven. I have just received the Lord's full salt under my burning throne, which raised in me a heaviness to bear up against what should ensue. How can we assure? By providence divine. Some food we have and some fresh water that a noble Neapolitan can solve what give us, with rich garments, linen, stuffs, and necessaries, which have studied much. Though of his gentleness, no one I loved my books, furnished me with volumes for mine own library, which I prize above my duty. I might but ever see that man. Sit still, and get the rest of our sea, sir. Here on this island we arrived, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, made thee more profit than other princes can that have more time for greater hours, and tutors not so careful. Heaven thank you for it. And now I pray you, sir, for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising the sea storm. Know thus far forth, by accident most strange, bountiful fortune. Now, my dear lady, hath my enemies arrived to this ship. And I find my zenith felt depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence is now I put not but omit. My fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. It's a good dullness to give it away. I know thou canst not choose. Come away, servant, come. I am ready. Approach my aerial. All hail, great master. Brave sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel in all his quality. Hast thou, my spirit, performed to the point the tempest I did make? <laughs> to every article. I boarded the king's ship, now on the deck, now in the waist, the beak, in every cabin I flamed amazement. Sometime I divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit, but I flame distinctly, the meat and joy. Joe's lightning! The precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulfurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege and make his bold ways tremble, gave his dread tried its shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant that this boy would not affect his reason. But the soul that felt the fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation, all but mariners plunged into the foamy brine and quit the vessel. Then all fire with me. The king's son Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leapt and cried, Hell is empty and all the devils are here! <laughs> <laughs> but was not this my shore? Oh, close by, my master. But are the hair of safe? Not a hair perished, and there's a saving garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bade me, in troops I have dispersed among the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the aisle, and sitting his arms in a sad knot. The king's ship, the man, may say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbors, the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou caught me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed Bermudas. There she's hid, the mariners all under hatches stow, who with a charm joint to their suffered labor I have left to sleep. And as for the rest of the fleet, they have all met again on the Mediterranean float. Bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish! Ariel, my charge exactly is performed. Aye, but there's more work. What is the time of day? Past the mid season, at least two glasses. The time twist now insists must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which has not yet performed me. Now, now. Moody, what is this about kind to that? My liberty before the time be out. No more. I pray thee, remember, I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, 
Made no mistakings, served without or grudge or grumblings. Thou did promise to bait me a full year. And dost thou forget from the torment I did free? No. Thou dost. And thou thinkst it much to tread the ooze and salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir! Thou liest, religion thing. Dost thou forget the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was born into a hoop? Dost thou forget her? No, sir. And thou hast. When was she born? Speak. Tell me. Sir, in Algiers, what she said. I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgetst. This foul witch Sycorax, for mischief's manacle, and sorceries terrible to injure human hair. From Algiers, thou knowest, was banished. And for one thing she did, they did not take her life. Is not this true? Aye, sir. This blue eyed hag was in the brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reports thyself, was then her servant. And for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act on earth being a poor commands, refusing her grand hest she did confine you. I thought of her more potent ministers, and her most unmakeable rage into a cloven hide. Thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died and left thee there. Thou didst spend thy groans as fast as Bill will strike. Then was this island, save for the sun she did litter here, a freckled well had born, not honored with human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. The old thing I say so. Either Caliban, whom thou in human service, thou best knowest what torment I find thee here. Thy groans to make cool his power, and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. Lay upon the down, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was my art when I arrived and heard thee that may take the pie and let thee out. And thank thee, master. If thou more murmurs, I will rend it open, take thee in his naughty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be corresponded to command and do my sprighting gently. So, and after two days, I will discharge thee. <laughs> That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Oh. Make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go, take this shape ahead of dominance. Go hence with diligence! Awake, my dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well, awake. The strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off, come on. Mm -hmm. Visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields his kind act. Tis a villain, sir, do not love to look on. Tis we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch our wood, and serves novices that profit us. But oh, slave Caliban, thou earth, thou speak. There's wood enough for thee. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise wind. Why not, for he should hearken my ear. My lord, it shall be done. <coughs> thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam. Come forth. As wicked do as am my mother brush with raven's feather from unwholesome fen, drop on you both. A southwest blow on you and blister you all over. For this, be sure tonight, thou shalt have baths, signs that shall pent thy breath up. Urchins shall for that bath tonight lay and work all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. The silence mine, by sycorax my mother, which thou takes from me. Since thou came, thou stroked and they butchered me. Wouldst give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee. I showed thee all the qualities of the isle. Fresh springs, brine pit, barren place and fertile. Curse be I that do so. All the charms of cigarettes, bats, toads, beetles, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have. Which first was my own king, ere you sty me in this hard rock. Well, you do keep me the rest of the island. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move not kindness. I have used thee, filled as thou art with humane care, and lodged thee in mine own cell. So thou didst seek to violate the honor of my child. What's happened done didst thou prevent me? I had people else's isle of Caliban. A horrid slave, which any prince of goodness wilt not take, be capable of all ill. Pity thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other. When thou didst not know thine own meaning, but was devil like a thing most brutish, who tell thy purposes with words that made them known. Therefore was thou deserved to be confined into this rock. Thou hadst deserved 
nothing more than a prison. You taught me language, and my profit and my profit on it is I know how to curse. The plague rate, the red plague, rid you of learning me of your language. Ash seed, hence, fetch us in fuel and be quick. Thou art best to answer other business. Shrugs thou malice, if thou neglect, or dost unwillingly with all command, all rack thee with old facts. Fill all my bones with ache, and make thee more that beast shall tremble at thy din. I must obey. His art is of such power, it would control my damned gods to depose, and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence! upon the watches, laying both its fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it has drawn me rather. But it is gone. No, it begins again. business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now behind me. The fringed curtains of thine eye. Advance, say what thou seest yon. What is it, a spirit? Lord, how it looks about, believe me, sir. There is a brave form, but tis a spirit. Oh, when she is each to sleep, and hath such senses as we have. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck. Something's changed with grief, but that's previous canker. Thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows and sways about to find him. I might call him a thing divine, <laughs> for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Goes on, I see. As my soul prompts it, spirit by spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. <laughs> Monsieur, the goddess on whom these heads attend. God save my prayer may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, oh, you wonder, if you be maid or no. No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language, heavens! I'm the best of them that speak this speech. Where I but words are spoken. How? The best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? 
Yes, him. Yes, he does. I weep. I self am nameless. And with mine eyes, never since I tell, he held the king my father read. Lack for mercy. His faith, though his lords. First sight they have changed eyes. Down at the area, I'll set the free for this. A word, good sir, a word. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so much at thee? This is the third man that ever I saw. First that ever I sighed for. Pity moved my father to be inclined my way. I would for virgin, and your affection's not gone full. I'll make thee the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. Your both and either's powers. But the swift business I must uneasy make. Lest too like the winning make the prize light. One word more. I charge that thou attend me. Thou dost hear usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the Lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing you can dwell in such a temple. The ill spirit hath so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Follow, well, and speak not for him. He's a traitor. Come, on land of land that can feed together. See what shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, with the roots and husks were in the acorn cradle. Follow. No, I shall resist such entertainment till my enemy has more power. Your father may not be reconciled for him. He's gentle and not fearful. But I say, my foot, my children, will put up thy sword, traitor, who makes to show but dares to not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy ward, for here disarm thee with this stick, and make thy weapon drop. I say to you, I say not on my garments. Sir, have pity on me, sir. Silence. He's not. Let more shall make me chide thee. Well, and not hate thee. But an advocate more than possible. An imposter. I don't think so. There's no more such shapes as he. Having seen but him and Caliban. Caliban! Foolish wench, the most of men. This is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most humble. <laughs> no ambition to see a goodlier man. Come. Thy nerves are in their infancy again, and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits as in a dream are all bound up. My father's loss, the weakness which I feel, the wreck of all my friends, and all this man's threats to whom I am subdued, are but light to me. Light I that through my prison once a day behold this maid. All corners else of the earth, let's liberty make use of space enough. Spirit, my spirit, thou hast done well. Follow me, our fellow shall do. Your comfort. Your father's of a better nature, sir, than he appears by speech. This is unwanted, which now came from him. Thou shalt be as free as mounted wings. Then do exactly all points of my command. <laughs> to the syllable, come. Father. And speak not for him. Green. The ground indeed is tawny. Is 
an eye of green in it. He misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, which is far beyond credit. As many vouch rarities are. That's our garments, being as they were, drenched in the sea. Hold notwithstanding the precious and glass being out there, the new dyed when Satan salt water. If but one of his pockets could speak, would not say he lies. Aye, a very falsely pocket of his report. He thinks our garments are especially new in after, at the marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabel to the king of Tudus. It was a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. But Tudus was ever grateful for such a paradox for their queen. Yeah, not since Widow died this time. Widow? A pox on that! How came that widow in? Widow Dido. Would have got said a widow on yes, too. Good lord, how you take it, sir. We are talking about our garments, seen especially in your tunic. The marriage of your doctor is now queen. And the rarest that ever came there. Faint, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido. Aye, Widow Dido. Sir, is not my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? Well, in a sort. That sort was well fished for. When I wore it at the marriage of your doctor, Please, you cram these words into my ears against the stomach of my sense. My daughter there. I think that's my son is lost. And at my rate, she too, who is so far from Italy removed, I never again shall see her. O oh, thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, a strange fish hath made his meal on thee. Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water, whose empty he flung aside and breasted the surge most forward against him. His bolt head bumped the contentious waves and oared himself with his good arms in a lusty stroke to the shore, that o'er his way borne to face his bow, stooping to relieve him. I not doubt he came alive to land. No, no, he's gone. Brother, you may thank yourself for this great loss. I would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African. For she at least is banished from your eye and cost with the grief on it. Hey, peace! You are kneel to and ever tuned otherwise by all of us. And the fair soul herself weighed between lowness and obedience at which end of being should bow. You have lost your son. I fear forever. Milan and Naples have more widows than them of this business making that we bring back to comfort us. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak to flesh and gentleness in time to speak. Rub the sword and should bring a plaster. Very well. And most certainly. Sir, it is foul weather to a foul weather. Foul weather? Very foul. And I plantation of some, my lord. Be so it with metal seed. Or dogs or mallet. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, or gunner, any image that I now have. But nature should produce with all poison, all abundance, to feed my ears and people. No marrying among his subjects. None, man. All I know. Whores and babes. With such perfection would I govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. Do you mark me, sir? I pray thee, no more. Thou dost not nothing to me. I do obey your highness. But did it to minister occasion to the gentlemen? For such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. To us you, we laughed at. Who in this kind of merry fooling of nothing to you? So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. What a blow was they had given. <laughs> it had not fallen flat long. You are a gentleman of brave metal. You would remove the moon from her spirit if she could continue in five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go bad folly. Nay, hey, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you. I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me to sleep, for I am very heavy. Go sleep, and hear us. I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be, 
the occasion speaks thee, and my strong imagination sees a cloud dropping upon thy head. What, art thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speaks out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose to be asleep with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and at so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep, and I rather, wakes whilst thou art waking. Thou dost more distinctly the meaning of thy soul. I am more serious than my cousin. You must be so too, if you need me, to which to do so triples the over. Well, I am standing one more. I'll teach you how to play. Do so, to what part of the very small instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish while thus you mock it, how it distributes you more invest it. Every men indeed most often do so near the bottom run, by their own fear or small. Prithee, say on. The saying of thine eye and cheek will come to matter, and of earth indeed will so be much to you. Thus, sir. Although this Lord of weak remembrance, this, who shall be of us into memory when he is heard, hath here almost persuaded. Who is a spirit of persuasion? Only professes to persuade the king his son's alive? It is impossible that he's on ground, as he that sleeps here swims. I have no hope that he's on ground. Oh, that's that no hope. What great hope have you? No hope that weighs another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce with beyond. But doubt discovery there. Will you grant me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then tell me, who is the next heir of Naples? Clarabelle. She that is queen of Tunis? She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life? She that from Naples can have no notes unless the sun were post? The man that moves so slow. So newborn chains be rough and razorable? She that from whom we all were sea swallow? Those who cast again. And find that destiny form an act whereof what's past his prologue in yours and my discharge? What stuff is this? I'll see. It is true my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis. So is she our Naples. Just which reasons there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, How shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis and let Sebastian make. Since we're death that now hath seized them. Why they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this good and solemn. I myself can make him chuff of as deep chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do. What to sleep with its fear advancement? Do you understand me? You think I do. And how does your content tend to your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and to look how well my garments stood upon me. Much be to them before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are mine. Much for your conscience. I so realize that. If it were a kind to put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand to explain the lawn can't be there. And not air they molest. Here lies your brother. Better than the earth he lies upon. If you were that which now he's like, that's dead. Goodbye. With this obedient steel, three inches of it can lay to bed forever. Whilst you, doing thus, to the perpetual wing for I might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not upbraid our course. For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say fits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my testament. As thou got to Milan, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou pays. And I, the king, shall love thee. My master, through his heart, foresees the danger that you, his friends, are in, and sends me forth, or else his project dies, to keep them living. Draw together, and when I drew my hand, do the like, to fall to the father. While you hear you sleeping, I open I conspiracy this time that If of life you give a care, she does slumber and beware! Awake! Awake! Now good angel, preserve the key. Why had no hope? Awake! Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? 
of all the matter. Well, as we stood here, so you can your repose. Even now, we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls, or rather lions. Did it not wake you? It struck my ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, it was a tint to fright monster's ear. To make it earthquake. Sure, it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming. And that the strange one to which did awaken. I shake to and cry, and as mine eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. There is a noise that's terrible. It's best we stand upon our guard as we quit this place. Lead off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heaven to keep him from these beasts. For he is sure in the eye. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what time I have done. So, King, go safely on to seek thy son. They can by each meal a disease. The spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But then nor pinch me, fright me with urchin shows, or pinch me in the mire, or leave me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid them. But for every trifle are they set upon me. Sometimes like ape that mad would chatter after me, then after bites me. Then like hedgehogs, like tumbling in my barefoot's way, and round the pricks at my footfall. Sometime am I. All wound with adders who with their cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. <coughs> load now, load. Here comes the spirit of his who torments me for bringing it with slowly. Awful flat. Perchance he'll not mind me. He has been bush nor shrub to bear up any weather at all. And another storm brewing, I hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud. Yon <laughs> Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot cheese but fall by pale fools. What's happening here? <laughs> a man? Fish? Dead? All alive. <laughs> a fish. <laughs> he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish like smell. A kind of not of the newest poor John. Strange fish. Were I in England now, as I once was, and had this fish painted, not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. When well, they will not give a piece of silver to relieve a lame beggar, they will lay out ten to see a dead Indian. A leg like a man, and his fins like arms. Wong, oh my trunk. I do now at least my opinion. Hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter here about. <laughs> <laughs> Misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. <laughs> Let her go, hey. This is 
Thou dost me yet little hurt? Thou wilt not. I know it by thy trembling. Thou wilt to rest upon thee. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cats. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking. I can tell you that. And that soundly. Oh, I do not know who is your friend. Open your chops again. I should know that voice. But he is drowned and, and these are devils. Oh, defend me! Four legs. And two voices. A most delicate monster. His forward voice now is to speak well of men, while his backward voice is to utter foul speech and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his accue. Come! Ah, uh, yes, amen. Uh, I shall pour some in thy other mouth. Life, this is the most perfidious and drunken monster. When God is asleep, he'll rob his bottle. 
I'll kiss thy foot. I'll swear myself thy true subject. Oh, well, come, swear to that. <laughs> I shall have myself to death if this but be headed monster. <laughs> a most stupid monster. I will find it in my heart to beat him. Oh, come, kiss. But the poor monster's been trained. <laughs> an abominable monster! <laughs> I'll pluck thee berries, I'll fish for thee, and get thee wood enough. I'll plague upon a tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks. So follow thee, thou wondrous man. A most ridiculous monster. <laughs> to make him wonder, I'm a poor drunkard. <laughs> I'll bring thee to where crabs grow, and I with thy long nails will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare a nibble marmoset. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts, and sometimes, I'll get the young scaffold from the rock. Will thou go with me? I pray thee, master. Lead the way without any more talking. Take The king is all our company. Who is being drowned? We will inherit here. Come, bear my bosom. Oh, Valentrico, we shall kill him by and by again. Farewell, master. Farewell, farewell. A howling monster, a drunky monster. No more dams, no make more fish, nor fetching, firing, at requiring. No scrape stretching, no wash dish. Ban, 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 you call it ban. Has a new master, get a new man. Freedom, high day, high day, freedom. Freedom, high day, high day, freedom. Freedom, high day. gentle than her father is crabbed. He's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. But my mistress weeps when she sees me work and says such labors had never like executor. These thoughts do even refresh my labors. Most Busy least when I do it. Alas, not pray you work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you were enjoined to pile. Pray, sit it down and rest you. And Miss Burns will weep for having buried you. My father's heart is study. Hurry up. Rest yourself. Be safe for these three hours. No, most dear mistress. The sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. You'll sit down on their logs a while. Pray give me that, I'll carry it to the pile. Thou no, most dear mistress, I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit to you by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease. For my good will it is to do it, and yours it is against. Oh, thou art affected. This visitation shows it. <laughs> Look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you all by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I broke your head to say so. Admired, Miranda. Indeed, the talk of admiration worth what's dearest to the world. For many a lady have I eyed with best regard. And many a time their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never any but such full soul but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. 
No woman's face remembers save from my glass mine own. Nor have I seen more that I call men than you, good friend. And my dear father, how features are abroad I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel in my dower, not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to life of. But I prattle something too wildly in my father's precepts, I therein do forget. I am in my condition a prince, Miranda. I do think a king I would not so, and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh while I blow my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service, and there it resides to make me slave to it. And for your sake, am I this patient pr Love, man. Do you love me? Oh, heaven, O oh, earth, bear witness to this sound and crown which I profess with kind event and I speak true. If hollowly, invert what best is boded me to mischief. I, beyond all limits of what else in the world, do love, prize, honor you. I am a fool to weep, and what I am glad of. Fair encounter, of two most rare affections, heaven's reign grace of that which breathes between them. <coughs> Mine own worthiness that dare not offer what desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. This is trifling, and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning and prompt me, plain and holy innocence. I am your wife if you will marry me. <coughs> if not, I'll die your maid to be your fellow. You may deny me. I'll be your servant whether you will or no. My mistress, dearest, am I thus humble ever? My husband, then? I, with a heart as willing ever of freedom. Here's my hand. Mine, with my heart in it. Oh, Enough farewell! So have the other hand! Thousand, thousand. Nothing. One day, and no more. 
Percy. I say by sorcery he got this isle, from me he got it. If thy greatness will, will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing to Well, that's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. Well, how now should this be compass? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest! Thou canst not! What pie is this? A scurvy patch, I do beseech thy greatness. Give him blow to take his balsam from him. When that's gone, he shall drink not of brine. For I'll not show him where the quick freshies are. Trinculo! Shumble the monster one more further, and by this hand, I will turn all mercy out of doors and make a starfish of thee. Why? What did I? I said that to thee. Didst thou not say that he lied? Thou liest. <laughs> Do I so? Take thou that. As you like it, give me the line of the time. I did not give the line. I took your wits and hearing to you. A brass of your bottle. This can sack and drink you. A rain of your mindset. And the devil take your pain gas. Ha ha ha. Standing stepmother on. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stepmother. Tis a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There if thou mightst bring him, having first seized his books, or with a log batter his skull, or punch him with a stake, or cut his weasand with thine knife. Remember first to possess his book, for without them he's with the soft as I am, and there hath one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rigidly as I, for but his books. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her non real. I never saw a woman, but only cigarettes my damn. And she, but she has far surpassed the corrects, as greatest does least. Is it so, brave alas? I warrant, and she will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth great brood. Monster, I will kill this man. This daughter and I will be king and queen. Save our graces. Oh, and, and Shikula and thyself shall be vice How does that sound? Does thou like the plot, Shikula? Excellent. Come, give me thy hand. Sorry, I beat thee. While thou lives, keep a good tongue in your head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Oh. Aye, on mine honor. This will I tell my master. Thou makes me merry. I am full of pleasure. Then is he Will you troll the catch and tell me about Weiler? Oh, yes. At thy right quest, monster, I will do reason. Any reason. Come, Trigula. Let us sing.
to see mocks our frustrated search on land. Well, let me go. I am much glad to be so comfortable. You have to walk the pulse. You know the purpose of your soul to be found. The next advantage will we take your leave. Let these nights, for now they are oppressed with your veil. They will not approach you after you with such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say, command, no more. Strange harmony is this, my good friends. Hark! Long as we can use you. Live us, kind neighbors, heavens, what part of these? The living jewelry. Now we'll believe in their youth. The Arabia does one of these. The Phoenix Bell. What do you make that this hour in your bed? I'll be broke. And what does else want, friend? Come to me, I'll be sworn to you. Tell them their lives, the world's hope to death them. The Queen needs to serve forward, and now would they believe? Why should I cross such avenues to search for the people of the island? Will their hostage take the of a more gentle kind of our human generation? Did you find it? Hey, almost in. Honest Lord, thou hast said well. For some of you, they are precious in all those endeavors. Not so much muse, such sweet, such gesture, such sound expressive. I only want to use a tongue. What an excellent, strong discord. Praise in the party. <laughs>
compensation makes amendments. For I have given you here a third of my own life, for that which I live. All thy vexations were but trials of thy love, and thou hast strange to the test. Here afore heaven I ratify this my rich gift. O Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast of her, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise and make it all behind. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my gift in thine own acquisition worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies, may with full and holy right be ministered. No sweetest virgin shall the heavens that fall to make this contract grow. But merry maid, soured eyes disdain, in discord shall bestrew the union of your bed, which we so will do, that ye shall pay the woman. Therefore take ye, as Simon's lamp shall light you. I hope for quiet days, fair issue and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion our once a genius can, shall never melt mine honor into lust. And fairly spoke. Sit then, talk with her, she is thine own. Come, my area. What would my put it, master? Here I am. Now, with thy meaner fellows, you must service did worthily perform. I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rattle of whom I give thee power here, to this place, and cite them to quick motion. I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it of me. Presently? Aye, with a twink. Before you can say, come and go, I breathe twice and cry so so, each one tripping on his toe, we'll be here and mop and low. <laughs> Do you love me, master? <laughs> no? Thee, my dear Ariel, I was not opposed without a scary cold. Well, I can see it. Look thou, be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rain. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire of blood. Be more obsequious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir. The white cold virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardor of my liver. Well, now come, my Ariel. Bring a corollary rather than a want of spirit. Appear and hurt me. No tongue, all eyes. Be silent. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich leaves of wheat, rye, barley, birches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains, the live nibbling sheep, which flash means flash to the stroke of the thy face with the lion and its grinning ribs, which is what she gave the lap thy husband. Thank you. 
harmonious charming. May I be bold to take these spirits, spirits, which by mine are glad from that confines to that my present past. Let's me live here ever. So rare a wonder, father in the white makes this place paradise. Come on, serious, we're serious. Hush now, be you. of their feet, yet always bending toward their project. Then I beat my tabard, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, and lifted their noses as they smelt music. Then calf-like, they my lowing followed, through tooth briars, sharp furzes, and pricking horse, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them in the filthy mantle pool beyond your cell, there dancing up to the chins that the foul lake overstunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible retained thou still. Draw free myself. Go bring it. Just yell against these thieves. I go. I go. A devil. A born devil on whose nature nurture can never stick. On whom my pains humanely taken. All, all lost, quite lost. And as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind hangers. I'll plague them all. Even to Rorin. Come, hang them on this line. Oh, monster, 
We know it belongs to a brick. Anna, who stole? You know, puts all that down. <laughs> By this hand, I'll have that gown. <laughs> and your grace shall have it. <laughs> the dropsy drab is full, but you mean to dote on such luggage? Let it alone and do it for murder first. For if we awake from toe to crown, here fill our skin with pinches, make a strange stuff. Be a quiet monster. Do do. We still buy line in level. Act like your grace. <laughs> go unrewarded while well, I am king of this country. Still by line and level. That is an excellent passive fix. Hey, mountain, hey! Silver! together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, they cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly him that you term, sir, the good old Lord Gonzalo. His tears run down his face like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. The charm so strongly works up that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou which want but air a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself one of their kind, that relish all the sharply passion as they, who kind their root now on? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason against my theory do I take heart. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. Being penitent, the soul drifts my purpose, doth extend not the crown further. Go, release them, Ari. My charms all break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Ye elves of hills, trucks, standing place of groves, and he that on the sands with pitless foot do chase the in the empty, and you fly him when he comes back. You demi puppets that by moon shine the green souring his make, whereof the you not vice, and you, whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms, rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid we masters of ye be. I have redimmed the new tide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure it both set roaring gold. So the strong rattling thunder had I given fire, and drifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory had I made shake. And by the spurs plucked up the pine and seamen. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers. Oh, to let them forth by my so told your heart. Rough magic, my hero, Sherlock. And I'm, I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do. To work my end upon with a scary charm. I'll break my staff. Very in certain fathoms in the earth. Deeper than it ever flung sound. I'll drop my bow. Solomon, the best comforter to men's own fancy, cure thy brain to thy useless foil from thy skull. There stand, for you are spellstone. My dear Gonzalo, honorable man, mine eyes, even sociable to the show of thy fall with healthy drops. The drop is off the face, and as the morning steals upon the night, melts in the darkness, so the rising senses begin to chase the eager and fumes that match the clear reason. Good Gonzalo, my true preserve, and a loyal certain in thou fallest, nor can thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was further in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you brother mine, who entertained ambition, 
Expel remorse and nature. From what Sebastian Whittier hath kills your king, I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. And the sand begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Be the coat of myself. I will disgrace me, and myself present as I was some time them all. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt along be free. Where the bees suck, there suck I. In the cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when the owls do cry. On the bat's back I do fly after summer. Merrily, 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 merrily shall I live now under the blossom that hangs on the bough. That's my dainty airy. I shall miss thee. Thou shalt have free. So the king's ship, invisible as thou art, that thou shalt find the mariners asleep under the hatches. The master and the bosom being awake can force them to this place. And presently, I prithee, I drink the air before me, or ere your pulse twice beat. Well, torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement dwells here. Some heavenly power guide us from this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wrong Duke of Milan, and for all assurance that a living prince is now yet speaking. I embrace thy body, and bid thee all a hearty welcome. Whether thou beast or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me as late I've been enough to know. My pulse beats as of flesh and blood, but since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, and if it be at all a most strange story, I do to my resign. I do entreat you, pardon me my wrongs. How can Prospero be living? Be here! First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I will not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties in the eye, that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. And you, my grace of lords, were I so mighty, I can here pluck his highness frown upon you, and justify you, traitors. This time I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in him. No. For you, most wicked sir, who did call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thee thy rankest fault, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou be Prospero, here is particulars of thy preservation. How thou hast met us here, whom three hours since were wrecked upon this shore. For I have lost, oh, how sharp the point of remembrance is, my dear son, Ferdinand. I am old for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss. Patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, of whose soft grace for the life loss of either sovereign name, and rest myself content. You the life loss? That's great to me as late. And supportable to make the dear loss, if I mean to much weaker than you may hold to comfort you. For I have lost my daughter. Daughter, they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself were mudded, and that oozy bed were my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? This last tempest. I perceive these lords are so much admired that they devour their clear reason, and scarce think their eyes do opposite the truth, their words are natural breath. But howsoever you have been jostled from your senses, know thus that I am Prospero. That very duke that was thrust forth the law. For on this island where you were wrecked was landed to be the lord of it. No more yet of this, this chronicle of day by day. Not a relation for a breakfast, or befitting for this first meeting. Welcome, sir, the cells of my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects none abroad. Pray you look in. My dukedom, since you have given me a gift, I will acquit you with this good of fame. At least spring forth of wonder to content you, as much as be my dukedom. Sweet Lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. 
He disproved the vision of the island. In one year, son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I curse them without cause. Now all the blessings of the glad father compass thee about. Arise, and say how thou camest here. Wonder how many goodly creatures are there here. <laughs> how beauteous mankind is that has such people in it. What is new to thee? What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? Sir, uh, she is mortal, but by immortal providence, she is mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, whom so often I have heard, heard renowned, and never saw before, of whom I have received a second wife, and a second father this lady makes him to me. And I am hers, but oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child for forgiveness. Yes, sir, stop. Let us not burden our remembrances for the heaviness that's gone. I have really wept. We should have spoken ere this. Look down, you golden, upon this couple drop of blessed crown, for it is you that have chalked forth the way which have brought us hither. I say, ah, man, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust so Milan that his issue should be kind to keep Naples? Or rejoice beyond a common joy and sit down with gold on lasting pillars? And one boy did Clarabel her husband find at Tunis? And Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospero is duke him in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me your hands. Grief and sorrow still embrace his heart, doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Oh, look, sir, look, sir, here is more of us. I pro prophesied a gallows where a landless man could not drown. Now, blast him. <coughs> Hast thou swear to me, overboard? Hast thou no mouth by shore? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely bound our king and company, the next our ship, which but three glasses since we gave up split, now tight and yare and bravely rigged as when we first put out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done since I went! My true sea spirit. These are not natural events. <laughs> they strengthen from strange to stranger. Say how thou camest here. If I did think, sir, I will well awake. I strive to tell you. We were dead asleep, and how we know not, all caught under hatches. Where but even now with strange and several noises of roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, and more diversity of sound, all horrible. We were waked, straight away at liberty, where we in all our trim first have beheld our royal good and gallant ship, a master keeping to eye her in the trice so we do. Even in a dream were we divided from them, and brought moping hither. Was it well done, sir? Greatly I do with this, thou shalt be free. This is as strange a maze as ever men trod. There is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not entrust your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At the fixed leisure which shall be shortly single, all we told you, which you shall sing probable. Of every these happen accidents, till when be cheerful, I think of each thing well. Harry, so Caliban is pangs free, as I expect. How fares my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads whom you remember not. Every man ship will you want to crash you? These be true spies I wear in my hand. Tis a goodly sight. These be brave spirits indeed. I'll fight my master <laughs> I'm afraid he will chastise me. What things are these, my lord Antonio? Well, money buy them. Oh, very right. Well, there's a plate, no doubt it's marked to pull. Yes, mark what the badge is, not my lord. Then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make clothes and ebbs and deal her command without her power. These three had robbed me, and this demi devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. That thing of darkness, I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. This is not Stefano, my drunken butler. <laughs> he is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo is really right. Where should they find this bread liquor that hath gilded them? How came thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last. I shall never fear me out to my bones. I shall not be a black one. Why, how now, Stefano? No, it must be not. I am not Stefano. What a crap. And you'd be the king of the isles, Sir Robert. I should have been a sore one then. 
That I will, and seek for grace hereafter. Put a thrice double ass thy once. Take this drunkard for a god to worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Hence, <laughs> and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell. For you shall take your rest for this one night. Which part of it all waste with such discourse, I no doubt may give a book away. The story of my life. And a particular accident since I came to the eye. And in the morn I will return to your ship and so to the neighbors, where I hope to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved Solomites. And then to retire me to my Milong, where every third thought should be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I will deliver all. I promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that you shall catch the royal fleet far off. you draw near. Now my charm is all overthrown. What strength I have is but mine own, which is most strength. Now tis true, I must hear me confine my or set to neighbors. Help me not, since I have my duty forgot, and harder than the sea dwell in the spare island my word spell, and release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breaths of yours my sails must fill, for all my project fails, which was to please. Appearances of force are to enchant and my ending is despair, unless I repeat by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon me, let your indulgence set me free.